Awaken Astroblade is an action-adventure cyberpunk side-scroller game that has been developed and published by Dark Pigeon Games and ES Digital. Bionic Girl Tanya is assigned by her creator, Dr. Hervius, to search and rescue a missing investigation force in the rainforest Haras Islands where a mysterious corpus energy turns local animals and plants into aggressive mutants. I never really heard of Dark Pigeon and ES Digital. I probably played a few of their projects in the past, but I'm not really aware of their projects that much. But I'm about to do some research because by me playing Awaken Astro Blade, I've enjoyed it so much to the point where I became a follower. And for those who are looking for hidden gems or just some small indie games just to get you into their retrospects, I have to give y'all some recommendations to try this game out, especially if you like cyberpunk thrilling games with a little bit of a twist and turn when it comes to combat maneuvers. And if you love the Ano project as well. By me enjoying this game and just playing it from start to finish and just trying to find any sorts of negative material that people have been talking about, I'm actually surprised of how much negative feedback that this game has been getting. I mean, if you look at reviewers other than me that talked about Awakened Astro Blade, it's mostly negative criticism. People talk about how this game kind of maneuver sucks, the gameplay is linear, we kind of been there and done that with the story. They're kind of right when it comes to those narratives, but not to the point that you want to trash this game down. This is an indie game. So when it comes to indie games, any developers or just indie publishers want to go come into an you know into in a cycle of looking at other developers that was successful of their own creativity and make it their own by their own polished ideas and not only that but this game is cheap <laughs> it's only 20 bucks on psn maybe a little bit more expensive if you buy it on pc if it's available on that source as well but my point is man <laughs> is that when it comes to a game like this you have to overlook certain things when it comes to you having fun if you're enjoying this game if you're playing this game and this game is putting you into an addicting cycle when it comes to the maneuvers of this of its creativity, is it really that bad? I feel like if you're going to attack this game, you need to look at certain things that's going to push a narrative of this game not being enjoyable by you pulling yourself away from the real world. Awaken Astro Blade doesn't do this. And the reason why I'm saying that is because of all the motherfuckers that's talking shit about this game, this game... It could be a hell of a lot worse, okay? Like, for example, by this game being fun, by this game being so tacked on to the, you know, when it comes to the combat maneuvers and just the addictability of the replayability of this of the game simulator, this game could have microtransactions. <laughs> Everybody know I hate microtransactions with a, oh man, with a brim. Going by for what I hate. This game can even be even a little more aspect when it comes to being in the hands of other developers. And I mean by other companies getting a hold to these projects and not putting a narrative making the game better or putting in a message. And what I mean by that is this game can be in the hands by something even darker like Sweet Baby Ink. You know, you'd be better off giving up now, or you'll lose face in front of everyone. Nice try, Gia, but this scholarship is important to me. <laughs> Says the guy that's playing with some random shit before an important interview. Where'd you get that anyway? Gia, <laughs> 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 stop! Teacher will be back soon. 
You will get us in trouble. If you don't want to get in trouble, then give it to me. Thankfully, we don't have that here. And I have been playing this game and I've been trying to notice any source of political correctness, any source of wokeism, any source of transism, any source of Black Lives Matter, or any rainbow suggestions in this fucking game. We don't got none of that on Astro Blade. And for people who've been living under a rock lately, do y'all even know the type of water that Sweet Baby Ink is under? <laughs> they are in bad strengths by Sweet Baby Ink being around for the last few fucking years and just attacking and just butchering all our friends that we know and love. Gamers have been tired of it. Gamers are really being outspoken of any source of any material that we may, may, may be involved in. And it's became so bad to the point where people are not even buying their games even before it even comes out. And I love that. Gamers are really making a stand. And I have to commend y'all gamers for this because I did not think this would ever fucking happen. I thought this was going to be a triangular rotation when it comes to us being force fed to this shit. But what ended up happening is that we kept pushing back. We kept fighting and kept using our maneuvers to not only give Sweet Baby and Contention their own medicine, but literally <laughs> we've been pushing them back to the point where we're actually killing them to the point where they're committing emotional suicide. That reference, I have to thank no none other than my good close friend of mine, Bioshock Heaven. If y'all don't know him, he is well known for being in my streams and we just have a lot of good downtime playing certain games. But all the negative criticism that's going on to this game, at least we don't got none of that woke shit on here. And I feel like that's the reason why, that's like kind of reason why we should support stuff like this. Because by this game being good, by this game being fun, I feel as if stuff like this needs to be in a reconciled gesture of us just appreciating that they're getting away from this type of shit. And to be fair, I'm actually happy that Sweet Baby Ink actually exists. And the reason I'm saying that is because we need platforms like this that comes with a negative tone to shed away people acting fake and showing us their true colors. Like Ubisoft, you know, like Ubisoft for example, or Naughty Dog. We supported them. We, you know, we guided them to the whole budget span of them being successful. And look where it turns out to the point where we are literally bashing on anything that they fucking touch because we know that their intentions is not to please us, but to please the modern audience. We need stuff like this to happen so we can know who is really on our side. It's like having a leader run a nation and they're racist or they are bigots, or at the same time, they're just disingenuous. And all of a sudden, you're seeing a lot of people supporting them acting the same way. You need people like this to be involved momentarily so we can know who to rely on when it comes to the shit hitting the fan. And the shit that's hit the fan is we've been being a lot to the point where, hey, you walk, you took a shit and you stepped on it, baby. You saw what I did there? <laughs> but I will say this, though. To go into an agreeing standard of what critics has been saying with this game, despite all the combat maneuvers, despite all the gestures when it comes to the physical vision of how this game is, I will say that the story is lackluster. Um, when it comes to Tanya being a created android by her doctor and she just going around finding certain clues or just finding out what's going on with the whole force itself and you getting progression cycle points so you can get stronger and you're finally you know and you finding out pieces of your own character as the story continues we have kind of been there and done that so you kind of feel no attachment to tanya's character you don't feel no immersive to a character you don't really feel like you care for a character at all and i can't speak for that for a lot of people when it comes to them playing games like this because they probably have it the reason i'm saying that's because i've been there and done that with games like this cookie cutter is to thank for this now, as for the visuals, I think that this game visuals is not getting the praise that it deserves. I 
think that the, in my opinion, the visuals of this game was pretty f phenomenal. Beautiful at times. Now, I played a lot of side scrollers that kind of have the same type of art style, but what I like about Astro Blade is the fact that it's not just good when it comes to the visuals of the cutscenes, but just the visuals of the environment as you visit them, even when it comes to you engaging combat. I was getting so much good feels when it comes to art, realistic, movement, 3D gestures of these type of projects that I've known and loved, such as the Murasama series and Dragon's Crown. And speaking of combat, the combat is very fluid pretty addicting at times too when it comes to you maneuvering certain counter abilities or just coming across didn't different paths of just finding out different ways how you attack your enemies and don't get it twisted you don't just have one weapon you have varieties of weapons to choose from in this game in your own discretion and these weapons come with different move sets different specials and, and above all you can upgrade them so you can switch it up you have so much lore and capabilities of this game to the point where it really gave me feels of Urza's Will of Fortune, one of the, one of the best side-scroller games I played this year and gave it the most high anticipated rating. Astro Blade gave me those feels once again, and again, it's it, it's something to give kudos and praise to when it comes to ES Digital and Dark Pigeon. They didn't just stop there when it comes to the creativity of how you attack and how you maneuver these enemies, but they also wanted you to just figure out how you can upgrade your weapons and your character when you go along the play style of this whole story. If you're all about combat and if you want to inflict as much damage as you can, you can have ways for you to upgrade your character and your weapons so you can do that. And they also have ways for you to gather more extra XP and more materials as you upgrade your character and your weapons too. So if you defeat an enemy and if they have like certain materials for you to catch, you can increase the method by pressing a certain button at the right time so you can get twice as much materials as normal. They put a lot of depth into the whole combat mechanics of this game to the point where I feel like they didn't just want to appeal to hack and slashes, but appeal to anybody that's into certain side scrollers any combat maneuvers to fit their whole favor. As for the enemies, the enemies was creatively enhanced, but not creatively executed. What I mean by that is they looked at nice, they looked at imposing, but when it comes to the patterns and how they attack, you can easily maneuver around that shit. So if you guys are looking for like a hard challenge for this game, they do have that here. You can increase the difficulty probably after you beat the game, but Honestly, for me, I thought the difficulty of this game was fine. It was well challenged. It was well executed. It was well put to the point where I get mad at games a lot. <laughs> so this is this was probably perfect for me. I was playing it. I died twice. But then after that, man, I felt like a badass when I ended up knowing the enemy's capabilities. But that can also lead to a flaw, too. Oh, to hold your horses. I'm not trying to say that the enemy attack pattern was perfect because these enemies are very predictable. They, you know, they use the same move pattern. They use the same predicaments to the point where you can easily figure this shit out. So for people that um, that is going to play this, especially myself, this game may spoil you when you play something harder, like Retro Realms, for example. The game's capability of the difficulty does increase when you go further into the game, especially when you begin to wrap this up. And when I was wrapping this up, I did notice that there were some challenges, some observations, some things I needed to come across. But at the same time, it didn't really pull me away from me enjoying this game. The more I was playing it, the more deeper I was getting into the lore of this project, the more I was enjoying it. And just like Will of Fortune Urza, the Urza game I was telling about, I didn't want to put the controller down. <sighs> this has been a good couple months of me playing a lot of good side-scrolling games, especially if they are JPRPG games and if they're hidden gems and if they're indie titles. Overall, this game was great. And it's a must-own for those who are into what I've just witnessed when it comes to JRPGs and good side-scrolling games to begin with. This game was an addicting ride for me. And the replayability is extremely high. I have not been this hook playing a game like this since Retro Realms, since Dark Light, since I keep saying <laughs> Urza's Will of Fortune. But I think that the game's recommend, you know, like this game replication is probably from Urza. I don't know if the same people made it though. I have to, again, I have to do some research because I had the same type of familiarities playing this game as I did with Urza. Now, people keep people may be asking, what is Urza? What is Urza's Will of Fortune? Never heard of it. Well, look at my review. I'll put the link in the description box. 
you guys are in for a hellish fun ride. Let's try this game out too. I'm gonna have to give <laughs> Awakened Astro Blade an A. That's the rating that this game deserves. Not a five out of 10, not a six out of 10, not a C minus. Who the hell gives scores like this the way I do them on YouTube? I don't know. So let's hope I'm the only one. <laughs> That's all the time we have, unfortunately. That's all I have to say for today. Please stay tuned for my upcoming reviews and videos headed your way. This is Hugo, your critic teacher. And I hope you all have a good day. Mm -hmm.